Hi guys, it's John here, and today we're going to be doing a benchmark comparison between the two S22 Ultras, Exynos 2200 and Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, S23 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, S24 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and the S24 Plus with the Exynos 2400. They've all got the February update installed, all set to 80% brightness, and we've got the temperature widget here in the top right of the screens to monitor the temperature as we go on, all charged to 100% as well, and all disconnected at the same time. So let's go through our Geekbench and Tutu 3 dmark and Chrome Browser Bench tests and see how they do. Right, so the CPU scores are in, and we can see not really much to talk about here. We've had a minor increase here on the S22 Snapdragon variant, and all the rest are just staying around the same. So we're going to move on to the GPU test and see how they do there. Okay, and there with the Geekbench GPU results, we can see again, not really much has changed across the scene. We have had a small 4% increase on the 2400, however. So, interesting results still. Exynos 2400 beating the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 still in the GPU benchmark. Okay, so next we're going to move on to the new Geekbench ML test, and this is actually going to test the AI capability of the phones. Now, this is going to be most interesting, hopefully, in the two new S24s, but of course, it will be interesting to see how the older devices cope as well with these AI-specific tests. So let's run through the CPU, GPU, and NNAPI tests, and we'll see how they all compare. Right, so that is the CPU score, and we can see quite a massive difference here, certainly between the Exos 2200 and 2400, the 2400 being almost 180% better than the 2200. Interestingly, in the CPU as well, it's also scored about 3% better than the 8 Gen 3, and the 8 Gen 2 actually not doing too bad in comparison, certainly to the older models at least. Okay, I'll switch them all to the GPU test now, so we'll run through this as well and see how they compare. Right, so some very interesting results there for the GPU test, and we can see 35% advantage here for the 2400 over the H and 3. Score for 1800 versus 1335. Probably the most interesting out of the lot is the fact that the 2200 here is getting 1104, which is actually higher than the S23 Ultra. So think of that, what you will. But uh, yeah, some very interesting results there. Right, so next up is the NN API. That's the Neural Networks API. So that's basically a sort of machine learning test. So let's see how they do here and see if we get any more interesting results. Okay, so definitely some more interesting results here. We can see the HN3 now beating the 2400 in the neural network test here. But look at this compared to the S23 Ultra, not really that far behind. We shall move on to our Antutu benchmark now and see how they compare here. So some interesting results there. Again, a couple of increases here and there across the board. Nothing too exciting to get worked up about though, but it is good to see everyone's pushing well over a million now on these results. And there's about a 55,000 point difference between the S24 Plus and the S24 Ultra, and nearly 300,000 difference between the S24 Ultra and the S23 Ultra. But if we compare the S24 Ultra to the S22 Ultra Exynos, you can see we're almost twice as good in the result. When that hits 2 million, will be just about twice as good. So there is quite a big improvement there over the last couple of years, but there is obviously room for more improvement, as we know with further updates. So what we're going to do now is our 15 minutes stress test, and we'll come back once they finish. These are last month's results, so we're going to test again for 15 minutes and come back once they're done. It'll certainly be interesting to see if we get any improvements here on the S24 Ultra. This was pretty abysmal last month, and we really want to see something better here from the 2400 as well. So let's see if they can do any better this month. Right, so the stress test has just finished and we can see some rather disappointing results here from the S24 Ultra. We're still getting this clock down to just over two gigahertz here on its main cores. So that's really disappointing. 
The 2400 looks slightly better than last month, possibly, but it's not really doing much down here. It's also down at two gigahertz mark for the last half of the test, at least. Now, I'd say that the two S22 Ultras have stayed pretty much the same as they were last month. We can see the 2200 still below two gigahertz, maybe 1.8 1.7 gigahertz for most of the test here. The H Gen 1 doing reasonably well in comparison, but where we've seen the biggest improvement here is on the S23 Ultra. We're back to where we were towards the start of the S23 Ultra's life here, with the clocks all running at their proper speeds, which is very small dips in between, and performance is absolutely outstanding. So you can see here, compared to the S24 Ultra, the H Gen 2 is doing much, much better here. And if you're wondering whether to go to the S24 Ultra on performance alone, then this test alone will show you that it's not worth it yet, at least. See, from these results, we've got some improvements here on the 8 Gen 1 and 8 Gen 2 and the 2400. Not so much on the 2200 III, however. There's some rather disappointing results here with a stability score of 58.3% on the S24 Ultra. Compare that to the S23 Ultra from last year, 71.7% stability. Yes, we have got those slower scores, but it does start to show the 8 Gen 3 is really not very well optimized in comparison. Let's pop on over to the Slingshot Extreme test and we'll compare the results here as well. Right, so Slingshot results are also quite interesting. Again, the S23 Ultra has had a massive increase here of about 12% compared to last month. We've actually had a loss of around 4% on the S24 Ultra. So really amazing results here for the S23 Ultra in the February update. Okay, so before we move on to the solar base stress test, which the HN1 cannot do, we're just going to check the battery life here because obviously these phones will lose more battery during this test and the HN1 here will not lose any because it's just going to be sat there doing nothing. So on 56, 58, 61, 64 and 57% remaining. So we're going to do the solar base stress test now and we'll come back and see what the results are. Right, so solar bay results are in and we've seen improvements across the board, which is really nice to see. So some excellent results there with interesting scores here with the Exynos 2400 beating the S24 Ultra here quite comfortably with a better stability as well. See our S22 Ultra, the 2200, scoring nearly 50% worse than our 2400 and our S23 here doing absolutely fine here with some great results and good stability for its processor. Right, let's proceed with Jetsune 2 for our final test, testing the browser speed here, and we'll come back with the results. So Jetstream 2 is in, and thankfully we've seen a nice improvement there for the 2200. I think it's got about 50 in last month, so that's pretty bad. Interesting results here for the HN3 and the HN1, very similar scores here. The HN2 easily beating both of them. Even the 2400 is beating the S24 Ultra when it comes to browsing speed, so that's quite interesting to see. But overall, the S23 Ultra is still the winner by a country mile here. So there we are, we have reached the end of the test, and yeah, it's quite an interesting one this month. With both the S24 Ultra and S24 Plus winning four tests each. We're going to give a point to the S24 Plus for the Geekbench ML tests as it won two of three of the tests, with the S24 Ultra just winning one of them. Ignore the battery percentage here for the time being because I'm recording this after I'd already done all the other tests on a different day. So we're going to switch back to that now and end the video. But there have been improvements overall across the board for the phones, so that's good to see. Major improvements for the S24 Plus and the S23 Ultra. I'm sure you'll agree. It's good to see that result back for the S23 Ultra, which is what we saw very early on in its life with the cores running at their respective speeds. So yeah, massive improvement there for the S23 Ultra. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do like, subscribe. Don't forget to leave any comments you have down below and I'll see you again in the next video.